So as you can see, population of the world is currently growing, growing at a rate of about 1.14% per year. You do a little math, and you'll realize that in 60 years, it will double. OK? In another 60 years, it will double again. So it's 2 times 2, which is 2 squared, right? That's 4. OK? In 14 or 15 doublings, that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 14 to 15 times, it will increase between 16,000 and 32,000 times. What does that mean? Present population of 7.2 billion will increase to over 149,000 billion, which means one human per square meter of land. Think of deserts, think of mountains, think of Himalayas, think of any piece of land you can think of, there will be a human there. Okay? It took me less than one minute of mathematics to show you that this is impossible. Right? Something will have to happen. A big change will have to happen. This relatively small increase in population will not be sustainable. Okay? If you go back and if you look at only two doublings, that's four times. Four times seven is 28 billion. That's more than anybody believes our Earth can sustain. Here's another example that actually we have heard a little bit about. Uh, this is a mathematical diagram of a black hole. So once again, black hole is formed when you have a huge mass compressed to extremely small volume. So think of our sun compressed to the size of, a, of an orange. Okay, so the gravity increases and it changes the fabric of our space and time. I don't want to scare you by this, but this is when you look at uh, what the previous speaker said, somebody, and he says, I have no idea what he's talking about. Okay, but this is a formula, it's undergrad, undergrad math, so you don't have to know it now, but you will then. And just focus on the first term for a second, okay? So think of a black hole, by the way, these exist. Multiply the mass of our, of our sun by, t by 1,000 and squish it down to the size of an orange. You have a black hole, and if you substitute uh, what you have in the formula uh, for the time, let me go back for a second. You remember, event horizon is the place which bounds the two areas. If you're above it, you're fine, you're happy. If you're below it, you're spaghetti, you're never coming out. Okay? <laughs> so, if you hover one meter above the event horizon, substitute into this equation, you'll prove this, that time slows down by a factor of 1,000. So it means if you manage to drive yourself to the black hole, hover one meter above it, one year for you is 10,000 is 1,000 years on Earth. That's mathematical proof that uh, travel into future is possible. Okay? All you have to do is drive yourself to the black hole, manage to hover one meter above it for a year, come back, and 1,000 years have passed on Earth. Okay? Well, what is the problem with that? The nearest black hole is 8,000 light years away. Okay? See, but I gave you two examples, right? In one case, you travel in future, here you travel in space. That's what mathematics can do for you. We are surely all going to die before anybody of us reaches any black hole, right? But we can compute. We, we can know what happens. OK. So that's, that's the point. Math is cool, right? We should all learn it. <laughs> and the more math we know, the better we'll understand the world around us. OK? So now the major question. So how do I, you, you should ask yourself, how do I learn math? How do I become good at it? And along the way, maybe have, have some fun with it, OK? So first of all, and this is probably the most important message, math is a perfect opportunity for you to fail. Fail and fail again and fail again and again and again. What's the point of the whole thing? You learn how to recover, right? You do a math question and you realize you're not getting the right answer. And then you realize, aha, I forgot that minus sign. You go back, you fix it, and you're happy because you get the right solution, right? So the importance of failing is cannot be under, underestimated, okay? How you recover from when you fail is one of the most important things in life as well, okay? Uh, many students come to uh, McMaster, my university, and other places, and they ask, and usually their parents ask, what's the most important thing about university? And that's what I tell them. I tell them, you have to know how to fail and how to recover from it. See what happens? You all have good grades, right? Are you prepared for the fact that your first test in my course could be 60%? What are you going to do then? Panic, scream, run home? Well, yell at your math teacher from high school? <laughs> okay. 
Well, you have to know what you plan to do. Some people cheat. Some people are caught cheating and punished. Some are even kicked out of university. Other students take study drugs because they cannot keep up with their work. So what do you plan to do? Okay. This is one of the typical boring math things. Solve a system of equations. There is a routine, and then you do x from the first equation, substitute into the second equation, and sooner or later, after failing and failing again, you come up to a solution, and then you get another equation. And then you know that there is a lot more to come. And then you ask yourself, well, you always say, this is boring. What's the point of the whole thing? OK? You're frustrated, and actually, many of my students say, I quit. I don't want to do that. OK? But am I really mean? Am I really mean to request my students to do that? OK, think a little bit about it. OK? You are bored, right? Let me tell you a big secret. Science is boring. Life is boring. You are boring. I'm boring. OK? It's only sometimes that things are more exciting. See, imagine that your life is always at some level of ex excitement. That will be your new reference frame. And your new excitement would be boring. And you would, you would be asking for more and more and more. There's no way you can do it except if you take cocaine, OK? So this is good. Being bored is good, OK? And there's one other thing. Turn tables around. This is the right question. Why is this boring? Does it have to be boring, OK? Here are my next equations you have to solve. Are you going to do it? You ask yourself, no, of course. You ask yourself, is there anything else I can do? And then you think, well, he said that actually equation could represent a line, OK? I don't want to go into all of this stuff. But then you realize the first one on the top, on the left, you see x and y coefficients are the same. So you have two parallel lines. They don't intersect, right? So there are no solutions. You don't have to solve it, you're done. Look at the one in the right corner. X and Y coefficients aren't the same. It means that the two lines will intersect. You're done. OK? And then you, by go, going through all of this, you discover a pattern. And you don't have to solve all this stuff. At, and that's exactly what I want you to do. I want you to ask yourself, why am I bored? Is there anything else I can do? And yes, you can figure out the pattern. And within five minutes, you'll be able to do all of that stuff. And you're going, you discover something for yourself, which is a lot more valuable than if I tell you. And you have done something really, really good to your brain as well. OK. So here is, I'm going to ask you to do some math now, OK? But it's, it's mental math. It's not difficult, OK? Uh, but also, it's, it's magic because I can actually read your brains, OK? Imagine a two-dimensional, two-digit number, OK? Like 29, OK? Have you imagined? So you all have your two-digit number, OK? Now subtract the first digit from it. So if it is 29, I subtract 2, I get 27. OK? Now subtract the second digit from that number. OK, so once again, two-digit number, like 27. Subtract 2, you get 25. Subtract 7, you get a number. OK? Have you all done it? Pick a symbol that corresponds to your answer. But don't tell anybody else at, at the moment. OK. Now look at me for a second. I want to see your eyes. OK. Is this your symbol? OK. Is this your symbol? OK. How many of you did not get this? OK. Uh, those of you who, has, who have hands in, your, in the air, it means you made a mistake. OK. <laughs> OK, so what, what's the trick? You see, it's a pattern, OK? Let me go back to this for a second. It's an easy math to show that if you have a two-digit number and subtract the first digit and then the second digit, you have to end up with a number which is divisible by 9. OK? Look at the multiples of 9. 9, 18, they all have the same symbol. OK? So I don't know what number you picked. OK? But I know that you didn't do a computation right if you didn't get the triangle. OK? This is something, this is a very powerful idea in math. It's called error detecting code. Your credit card number has the same property. Did you know that? I don't know your credit card number. But if you misquote it, I'll be able to figure out. I'll, I'll tell you, that's not your credit card number. OK? So this is not just a game. Somebody actually discovered this pattern. How? By playing. There's no math theory for this. OK? You have to play. And by playing, by being bored with something, not knowing what to do, people discovered all kinds of things. OK. Oh, OK. Um, 
It, these days, everybody writes apps for phones and stuff like that. So I wanted to do my own, and here's my idea, and I don't know, I want to see whether you like it or not, okay? So here's the idea. So it's your phone, you're on a phone, and you look, you're walking through a forest, you pick a tree. The objective is that you fall from a tree, okay? <laughs> so you pick a tree in the forest, you climb up the tree, you can say how high you want to go. When you're high enough, you see, well, you see the ground there, and you push a button and you fall off the tree. And you see yourself fall on the branch below you, you break, break that branch, you keep falling and falling and falling, you fall to the ground, and the app tells you if you broke your leg, if you broke your neck, if you just bruise yourself or something like that. <laughs> is that a good idea? Yes. But what is the problem with it? Sorry? What is the problem with pushing a button and falling from a tree? Boring and? It's not dangerous, it's not real. That's the problem, right? You might fall from a tree 100 times, nothing will ever happen to you, that's not good, okay? How many, how many of you actually fell from a tree, from a real tree? Look around yourselves, that's not good enough, okay? So one exercise for afterwards, climb up the tree and try to fall from it, and then recover from it, okay? Okay, okay. what does this have to do with math? Every time I post an assignment, some students ask me when are you going to post solutions. Sooner or later I do. And this is a solution to a math problem. So students like to read solutions. That's like falling from a tree on your app. Look at it. This is a complicated question. Don't worry about it. But uh, if you just read this, you'll not realize that actually some choices were made here. Imagine a blank sheet of paper. First of all, you have to make a decision. Do I draw a diagram? What do I do with it, right? I have to pick my symbols. I have to label things, I have to start with some equations. All of that is lost on you if you read my solution, okay? Why do I collect pi terms? It's not at all clear if you just read through it, okay? So by reading my solution, you're not learning anything. If you have very little time and you need to prepare for a test in math in university or in high school, don't read solutions anyway. Just try to do a few exercises on your own, it is a lot more beneficial. Reading somebody else's solution is like living somebody else's life. Or uh, falling from a tree in my tree app. Okay? Another thing that is real. Nobody is at fault for your problems with math, okay? Your teachers are not, not a problem. You are, you are your problem, okay? So it means you have to take responsibility for what you do and how you do it, okay? So one of the things is, as I said, uh, learn how to learn properly. I see lots of my students study, but they also have their iPhones on, and, and, and the, 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 the Facebook is on, and you can't do stuff like that, okay? Math requires your full concentration, your full brain, okay? And in the same sense, you have to take responsibility for everything else. See, one of my students, so we had a day uh, when parents and students come on campus, he forgot to come, and he sent me this message, I'm so sorry. <laughs> what exactly does that do? He wasn't there, he didn't call any of his friends to come as a replacement, okay? So what happens when you mess up more, this is the message you send, right? If you mess up, keep mess up even more, this is what you send, right? How does that help with anything? Okay. I don't even know how to read this. It will take forever. Okay. Something else about math. Okay, let's go to this example. You're four years old and start playing video games for about two hours each day. By the time you finish high school, you will spend more than 10,000 hours playing video games. Let me tell you something. Two hours in underestimate if, is an underestimate if you look at video games, television, and whatever people do. Okay? What else can you do with 10,000 hours? Uh, you need to take about 40 courses to graduate from program, programs at McMaster University. Any program. The hardest one. Okay? Each course is 12 and a half weeks, and suppose that you study 12 hours a week, which is by far above the average. It means that you're an A-plus student, you're a top student, you're top 2% of class, okay? That's 6,000 hours. And with the remaining 4,000 hours, you can finish your master's and be halfway through a PhD in math. Okay, okay. that's 10,000 hours, okay? Now you decide what you want to do. Okay. Another thing, math is a humbling experience. This is me in math, and this is math, okay? You can never feel that you're on top of it. 
there is always more, and that's what, exci what is exciting about it, right? There's always more and more and more to learn. I never feel that I'm the center of the universe. I never feel I'm the most important being in the world, okay? And this kind of humbling, humbling experience feels really good, okay? So for me, uh, when I see something like this, I go berserk. And you're going to hear all of this stuff in your graduation and many, many times in university as well. This is total nonsense, okay? <laughs> Whatever you do, never, ever give up. Seize the day, okay? Dream big, sky's the limit, excellent. No, this is the real stuff. You're not going to bang your head against the wall forever. No when to give up. This is serious, okay, don't laugh, this is serious. Okay, seize some days. I mean, how do you seize a day? You're a parent of a teenager who has gone out drinking and hasn't come back home. How do you seize that day? You tell me, okay? No, just dream, what's wrong about dreaming? Dream big usually is related to the dollar sign and the figure next to it. Forget about all that stuff. Sky isn't the limit. I mean, learn about your limits, and that's fine, okay? Not excellent, good enough. Good enough is good enough, okay? Somebody once said, and I really agree, you know when you're the happiest? You're the happiest when you're happy, but you realize that you can be happier. Then you're the happiest. Did you process that? Okay. In conclusion, okay. So what's important about math? Fail many times before you succeed. That's good and important. It needs practice, dedication, hard work, and time. Like anything else in your life. Think about your friends, okay? Think about really genuinely having a friend, okay? All of that stuff is relevant. It's a real and humbling experience. Deep and not superficial, and allows you to investigate, create, and play, and it's a very personal experience. When you do something on your own, and you get something, that's the feeling that you cannot translate from one to another. Right? It's your own very personal feeling, okay? And then when you just overlay, it's the same thing for life, okay? You fail many times before you succeed, okay? I don't think if your first relationship will result in a marriage and, and blissful, happy life forever, okay? You need practice, dedication, hard work, time, no matter what you do. Look at the guys who will play later on. Do you think they, they have done half an hour of practice before this? Okay. Make it real, hum maybe they did, I don't know. <laughs> Make it real and humbling experience. Make it deep, not superficial, okay? And what really matters is inside of you. So don't look at things outside, okay? Like math, look at inside, and that's for me. That's true, li that's true life, true happiness, and true success. Thank you. Okay, thank you.